the right that people have to be able to express their civic duty. And last year we had 21 million people. So we were talking about significant fundamental principles about democracy, the importance of all people being able to express their voice in every way, including through their vote. Uh, there's so much about our work that we do together that really is grounded in also, I think, a common belief in the importance of self-determination and the connection between that and the right that people have to be able to express their civic duty um, in every way, including through their ability, unfettered ability to vote. So I want to thank you all. Um, we have often discussed that voting is a fundamental freedom that unlocks all the other freedoms. And um, last month, many of us got together in, in the state of Georgia to address the threats to that sacred freedom. And so today, we gather to lay out a four-part strategy to protect the freedom to vote. The first part is the work that the President and I have done to charge every federal agency to do all they can to make sure that every American has the information that they need to know how they can vote when they are um, eligible. And so I can now announce as, as a follow-up to that charge that the, that HHS, Health and Human Services, will start emailing information on how to register to vote to everyone who enrolls in the ACA, the Affordable Care Act. And last year, we had 21 million people. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about a significant number of people. The first email was actually sent last Friday. The Social Security Administration will display signs for vote.gov. I'll repeat that for those who are not in the room, vote.gov. Um, and they will have that information in all uh, Social Security offices, which are approximately 1,200 offices around the country, which receive on an annual basis about 6 million visitors. The Department of the Interior will participate in that the national parks will display vote.gov information at park entrances and visitors' centers. So these are some examples of how our administration and the President and I have been able to, to charge federal agencies with doing the work that they rightly can do to inform the American people of their right to vote. Second, we have been doing work to promote voter participation for students. And for example, we have, um, under the Federal Work Study Program, now allow students to get paid through Federal Work Study to register people um, and to be nonpartisan poll workers. As we know, this is important for a number of reasons. One, to engage our young leaders in this process and, and activate them in terms of their ability to, to strengthen our communities, but also this is the work that we need to do knowing that so many poll workers have left this work for a variety of reasons that we will also discuss. Third, we are doing work on behalf of our administration to protect election workers, which is obviously connected with the previous point that I made. In recent years, we have seen attacks on the integrity of elections. We have seen those who would loudly attempt to interfere in the uh, lawful votes of the American people and um, attempt to question the integrity of a fair and free election system. We have seen a rise in threats against poll workers. I, in fact, met some recently in Georgia who had harrowing experiences in terms of how they were threatened, their, their well-being as well as their livelihood. Um, we have, to that end, in terms of protecting election workers through the Department of Justice, created the Elections Threats Task Force which has held over 100 events to train local officials to protect election workers. Uh, my chief counsel, Erica Songer, where are you, Erica? There she is, um, can share contact information at the Department of Justice for all those who might want to make sure that they have all the information that they would need to do their important work. Fourth, we are continuing with all of the leaders here and with all the other work with the leaders here to fight voter suppression laws. Um, states across our nation, as we know, have been passing anti-voter laws. The Department of Justice has challenged laws that discriminate, such as in Georgia and Texas, 
And again, Erica can provide the folks at this table with points of contact if you have further information that the Department of Justice may need to do its important work in that regard. And then, of course, uh, many of us will be in Selma on Sunday um, to commemorate Bloody Sunday, to remember the great John Lewis and Amelia Boynton and so many others, and um, to issue a call yet again for Congress to pass the Freedom to Vote Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. And so this is some of the work that we will continue to do. And I'm also pleased to announce today that we will declare three national days of action together with the leaders here, where we can continue to do our work that is about uplifting communities, strengthening coalitions, strengthening communities around their power and ability to lead in their own communities. And so those three national days of action for voting will be Juneteenth, the anniversary of the Voting Rights Act, and of course, National Voter Registration Day. And I look forward to working with all the leaders here and, and others around the country to um, organize folks around these three days in addition to what happens every day. So with that, I thank you all again. I look forward to this conversation. I'm now gonna turn it over to the great Neera Tandon to moderate our conversation. Uh, thank you so much, Vice President Harris, uh, for your remarks, but also just for your incredible leadership and push on these issues. And I wanna thank the press for being here, and then, but also invite the press to exit before we continue the meeting. And the right that people have to be able to express their civic duty, park entrances, and visitors' and centers. So these are some examples of, um, in every way, including through their ability, unfettered ability, being able to express their voice in every way, including through their vote in, in the state of Georgia to address the threats to that sacred freedom. And so around the country, which receive on an annual basis about six million visitors, uh, there's so much about our work that we do together that really is grounded and also, I think, a common the American people of their right to vote. Second, we have been doing work with the Security Administration. We'll display signs for vote.gov. I'll repeat that for In that the national parks will display vote.gov information and to charge every federal agency to do all they can to make sure that the first part is the work that the President and I have done. Today, we gather to lay out a four-part strategy to protect the freedom to vote, fundamental principles about democracy, the importance of all people. Be and last year, we had 21 million people. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about significant that every American has the information that they need to know how federal agencies were doing the work that they rightly can do to inform, can now announce as, as a follow-up to that charge that the, that 